Today, an interview in action from the Vive event down here in Miami. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels dedicated to keeping health IT staff current and engaged. We want to thank our show sponsors who are investing in developing the next generation of health leaders, Gordian Dynamics, Quill Health, TauSite, Nuance, Canon Medical, and Current Health. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. And now, on to our interview. All right, here we are from Vive 2022, and the uh, crew is moving stuff around behind us, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Michael Pfeffer with uh, Stanford. Uh, new organization. Yeah, new organization. I'm looking forward to the uh, conversation. So you, uh, last time we talked, you were with UCLA. Yes. Now you're with Stanford, you yes. to move up. Um, I assume you're pretty excited about being at Stanford. I mean, that's the center of really tech innovation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, at UCLA is an amazing place and uh, very fortunate to have spent 17 years there and uh, now up at Stanford and uh, kind of really in the hub of innovation, incredible faculty, incredible research. Uh, it's, it's truly an amazing uh, place to be. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I mean, you have, you have UCLA who would have loved to keep you and you have Stanford who's want you to come up and be a part of it. I mean, those are two great organizations to be a part I, of. I can't complain. It's really incredible. Um, you know, I only have 10 minutes with you. I want to, what, what's top of mind for you? What do you think is, I don't know, the, the most important thing that you, I don't want to do that to you, <laughs> but what's something that you're focused on right now that you think is, is uh, pretty impactful? Yeah, so um, we made a recent announcement that uh, Stanford Healthcare hired its first chief data scientist, uh, Dr. Nigam Shah. And the idea behind that is really embedding within the healthcare delivery part of the organization and the IT organization, applied uh, AI. So the idea is how do we actually take all these algorithms that are developed, bring them into the healthcare setting, and then monitor them and care and feed them and make sure they're performing the way they are. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. All right. So. Data science is interesting. Yes. This, this concept's coming up over and over again. We're seeing a lot of uh, big data aggregators who are saying, all right, we're going to bring these big clinical data sets together. Yeah. I guess that has its its purpose, but you're, you're doing this locally. You're doing this locally. Well, I, I think that there's a huge you know, opportunity for looking at the local data sets and how they perform locally because um, Every site has its own kind of culture, the way it does things, the way it maps data, the way it documents. And so you really need to kind of craft these algorithms specifically around clinical decision support based on kind of the way the organization practices and then monitor them because they're going to change. And there's a lot of really good evidence that algorithms, you know, drift over time. And so if you're not constantly, you know, checking them, feeding them new information, then they're not going to continue to perform. You know, I had I had an interview earlier and they were talking about how the even within a single health system, if you don't get the data set from what they say, like ten PM to seven AM, that's a that's almost a different data set yeah. in your especially your E D than it is the rest of the day. And that can cause that algorithm drift as well. Absolutely. I mean so you really have to I mean, this is why the data scientist makes the most sense. I mean you really I agree. have to uh, And so with Dr. Shaw is gonna be reporting into the IT organization, into me. So he'll be part of the IT organization's leadership. So it's not only a focus on AI, but also another voice on the leadership team about you know, where, where we need to go in the future. So I think that's really exciting as well. But it's really about you know, that local flavor, that continued data science team that's evaluating things for your organization. And it's not just clinical decision support, it's how do you improve operations. I think there's a huge opportunity with InBasket and, and you know, how, how we kind of improve that. So there's a lot of opportunities, but it's really understanding kind of a framework about, okay, so we have a problem to solve. Can it be solved with AI? If you had an algorithm that gave you an answer, could you do something with it? And if you can, then it's worth investing it in the time to try to develop it. Is there still a cultural challenge for clinical adoption of AI? I mean, but clinicians in general, they're, they're, yeah. they're scientists. I mean, they, they look at, you know, if you can, if you can work with them, show them, if there's yeah. transparency to the thing, I would think they're open to it, and especially at a place like Stanford, yeah. I think they would be. Yeah, I mean, I think clinicians overall are open to lots of things. I mean, clinicians are incredibly innovative, thoughtful, 
um, constantly looking at new evidence on how to treat people. So it's more how do we kind of get them involved? How do we display information in a way that's not simply a number, a yes, a no, a green, or red? It really has to be, here's what the prediction looks like. Here's why the prediction is happening like this. And I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done around how do we actually display this information in a way to clinicians that they can use it to augment their decision, not make the decision for them. What about the transparency into the algorithms? Yeah, so I think that's a good point. I mean, ideally you have full transparency and there are kind of new techniques emerging where even your kind of uh, deep learning algorithms, which tend to be a mystery, are becoming less and less mysterious. So I think that's going to be a huge opportunity around you know, bringing that transparency. How does the algorithm work? What are the variables that are going into it? Um, and I think that's going to be really key, especially around clinical decision support. So at UCLA, you probably had a lot of people knocking on your door saying, hey, we'd like to get into UCLA, you work with your docs and those kind of things. Stanford's like a, I, I would think, maybe a, just a tick higher than that of people going, hey, I've got this great idea. Uh -huh. I mean, because you, I mean, you have all those people there, you have the money there as well. I, I, when people ask me, you know, what's the difference between Southern California and Northern California? The entire ecosystem exists in Northern California. It's not that you don't have innovators in Southern California, you absolutely do. Yeah. But the, the ecosystem is just more well-defined at, at Silicon Valley. Yeah, I mean, I think there were tons of opportunities at both sites, and it's really trying to understand, you know, what's going to provide value? I mean, there's so many companies, I mean, as you, as you yeah, see here, right? It's like, where do you even begin? And I think it's about starting with, okay, well, what problem do we need to solve at our health system, at our school of medicine? What do our faculty need from us? What do our patients need from us? And then go out and look. Can we do it internally? Can we use the tools we have? Do we need to go to market? Rather than kind of more of the, you know, let me just go see and go shopping for what's out there. But I think, yeah, I mean, Silicon Valley is an amazing place to be. There's incredible innovators. Silicon Beach and Los Angeles yeah, as well, it's, it's right? Nice. So, so Absolutely. lots of opportunities, I think, at both places. So, what do you? Uh, I, I mean, the transition. Yeah. Transitioning to a new role. How long have you been up there? Uh, just going on seven months. Oh, so you're it's, it's you're pretty well past the transition at this point. Still, still learning a ton. It's it's an incredible yeah. organization. So a lot to learn. The, uh, you know, when people do that transition, there is. Um, you know, from one academic medical center to the other, there's still a lot of, of distinctions of, of each one. What's, yes. What, what was the biggest transition that you had to go through going from one to the uh -huh. other? Well, I think it's learning how the organization works, the culture of the organization, how the School of Medicine and the health delivery system kind of interact. Um, how do they think about strategy and strategic planning? One of the things I, I love about Stanford is they have a uh, overarching strategic plan that involves the School of Medicine, Stanford Healthcare, and Stanford Children's. So it, it really has a, a brought kind of the organization together in a really spectacular way. Uh, they call it the Integrated Strategic Plan. And part of that plan is being digitally driven. So it, it, it's kind of, we live and breathe that. And I think that's really, really incredible. So learning that and, and how that infuses through the entire organization has been really, really great to see. Where does, where does innovation reside? Is there an innovation or is it just an innovative culture? It's an innovative culture. Like, I like to say that everybody's innovating all the time. Our analysts who are figuring out like the next best way to kind of tweak our systems, that's innovation. Um, so I, I like to say that innovation isn't a team that sits somewhere. It's really kind of everything and everybody. And if you, if you have that kind of culture, which I, is definitely the culture at Stanford, I think you can do amazing things. Do you have a, uh, like, taking the innovation to market kind of approach at Stanford? Yeah, so we have some really great programs around this. So we have a Catalyst program that's really looking for internal innovations. Let's call them transformations, right? So everybody's innovating. Some of these really can become transformative. And so we have a, a, a program that's actually uh, uh, designed really to take these really great ideas, they apply to it, and then give them the, the resources, the help, the planning to take it to the next level and potentially commercialize it. Now, we, we picked a great spot, by the way. Anyone who's watching this on camera, we've had uh, a, lot, a lot of uh, people walking by. Yeah. Um, 
We should have put one of those little like floor is wet sign over there, but that's well, okay. Maybe if we were a little more innovative, we would have <laughs> we would have had some way to, to keep them coming through. The uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to getting back in touch with you. I yeah, would just do I would a, love that. A, a quick hit here. Um, and I'd love to come up to your campus and, and see some of the stuff that you guys. It'd be amazing. Well. We ha we have such an incredible new uh, facility um, that was built a few years ago. Well, it opened a few years ago, right before actually the pandemic, and it's been an incredible addition to the Stanford uh, healthcare kind of ecosystem. But it's really transformative and state of the art. Um, so yeah, it's 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 quite the place. Fantastic, Mike. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, your time. Absolutely.